Let's see. Earlier today, Andrade arrives at the building. He is told, met by security, and told management does not want him there after what he did last week. And then he's ejected. I missed last week's show. I haven't the foggiest clue what Andrade did, and they did nothing to inform me. Mike, you can tell I, I don't remember either. You can he, tell me, and that's I, fine. I think he got involved. Actually, I don't even know if he did anything, because what they said was, there's a trio's title match tonight. His mask has been stolen, so he is angry at the House of Black. They don't want him to interfere, thus he is not allowed in the building. That's what I think is going on here. Well, he didn't actually interfere last week. He was just demanding his mask. Well, I know, but they, they're afraid he will interfere tonight. Understood. Therefore, Understood. they're booting him out. But he, he has... He didn't do anything to warrant him getting ejected, is what I'm saying. Well, in the theory, he did. He wants to kill them, and they don't want him <laughs> to kill them in the middle of this match, so he needs okay. to leave All right, so they can fine. have a fair match. Action and Dreddy and Darius Martin versus Bullet Club Gold. So... Bullet Club Gold lost the tag team title match last week. Yet yeah, they continue to wrestle the tag team matches here for this new faction, which makes the question of what is the point of the guns if Switchblade and Rockhart are doing all the tag matches? Don't complain about this, Vinny. The, the point is they're having much better matches. Well, that's guys. actually that's fair. That's <laughs> yes. fair. All right, so uh, you got a draping neck breaker off the apron for the heat. Hot tag right when we get back, and the small guys are flying all over the place. Uh, Jay White, who is in fact awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. He's uh, in trouble. It's fun. It, it, it's a different setup in that it almost feels, feels like a babyface spot, but it's not. Uh, Jay White is in trouble. He's, he, but every time he's on the verge of being beaten, Juice flies in out of nowhere to make the save. But they dispose of Juice again and keep beating up Jay. And as this cycle is repeating, somewhere in here, Nitro refers to Jay White's partner as, and I quote, "Wild and vir viral rock hard Juice Robinson." <laughs> well, he's fucking rock hard. Of course, he's viral. Apparently. Yes. So eventually they cut off action, and they have like five finishes in a row on him, the left-handed god, and eventually the blade runner, and they pin him. And then a four-on-two beatdown ensues, and nobody saves, because action and Darius have no friends. And it was a fun tag match. Bugger to find out what the point was. Well, I enjoyed... Well, they gave him a win, I guess. But uh, I enjoyed the match, but I could not help but note that the director managed to miss the finish. <laughs> yeah. That's it takes a lot of talent to miss the finish, especially when the finish did not come out of nowhere. No, the finish was Jay very clear. Draped him over his knee. <laughs> he was about to go, and the director decided I must get a shot of Juice being rock hard outside, mm. and they missed the Blade Runner. But they did show a replay afterwards, so there was that. The guns have now hitched their wagon to these awesome, awesome wrestlers, which um, it makes them look even less cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Last week, Willow wins the Owen, Willow Nightingale wins the Owen Hart tournament, and then she has a match with Athena at Death Before Dishonor. They don't tell us who won that match, but they do tell us Willow is standing towards the top of the mountain. I didn't see the match, but I've heard nothing but great things about the main event, uh, uh, the women's match, including from one Will Osprey. Yeah, who went out of his way to praise it publicly. I have two matches left to go, and that's one of them. Right. So I'm going to watch that right after this show's over. Miro versus Nick Camarado. So Miro's in squashing dudes every week. And he comes out here, and Camarado jumps in from behind, and he's whipping his ass in the ring. He gets in the ring. He's even bigger than Miro, whipping his ass in there. I'm like, all right, good old hoss fight. And as soon as I think that, Miro does dodges one thing in the corner, hits one suplex, one kick, and the game over and wins. Like, I was enjoying that. You know, everybody kept asking, where's Miro? Where's Miro? Where's Miro? Where's Miro? Where's Miro? Do you guys remember what Miro was doing before he left? Was it a lot of this? He was doing this. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he kept doing this. And uh, and he kept doing this. And he kept doing this. And it's like, well, let's do a fucking program with this guy already. And apparently, he didn't really want to do any jobs. And when, you, when a guy's not going to do any jobs, it's just like, well, we ain't got nothing for you then. Those were the creative differences, I believe. And so uh, he was gone for a long time. And so then they start this show up, and uh, and he's back doing the same fucking thing. He squashes people every week. They're fun and everything, but the point of Collision, correct me if I'm wrong, is to get people to watch it, right? Sure, sure. Okay. All right, yeah. Well, you know you're going to need some storylines, and you're going to need some feuds, and we're going to need some stuff to sink our teeth into. Right. And uh, Miro squashing dudes every week, it ain't doing it for me. Like, is he going to do jobs? 
Because if he's not going to do jobs, what's the point? He's just going to come out here and squash people every week and nothing matches. If he's right. okay doing jobs, then it's time to uh, to get him in a program. He right. doesn't have to do a job in the first program, but like, let's get let's get this going here. This collision has been how many weeks has it been now? Four or five? I believe this is four. What are the big programs here on this show? Uh, CM Punk and Ricky Starks. Okay. Bullet Club Gold and FTR, which appears to no. be over. That's that's not a yeah. It's it's actually FTR that's, and people from the other show, that's Dynamite. True. Yeah. yeah. It's now. Like it's it's time we get some stuff going here. Yeah. Scorpio Sky being there. Yes. Sure. Scorpio Sky is watching matches. Yeah. Yes. Uh, he wants the. Uh, uh, I'm drawing a blank. The best I could do. Maybe Miro could bring his uh, hot double jointed wife. No, Miro has has gotten rid of his wife. No, you no. aren't. He, you no. He brought her up less than two weeks ago. Yeah, he said that he he had given up on his god and his wife. That's the storyline. He's he's shunned his god and his wife. Seems counterproductive. So uh, yeah, he's he's uh, now he's just out squashing guys. I'm ready for more. Uh, you're not alone. I thought we were gonna get more here, and then we didn't. Uh, FDR hype video, noting their wins over the Briscoes and the Young Bucks and Bullet Club Gold. House of Black versus the Acclaimed for the trio's titles. I laughed my ass off at the start of this because every time the Acclaimed Russell uh, Russell Buddy Matthews. They talk about his he's being cucked by a kid named Dominic. Mm -hmm. And every time uh, Rhea Ripley does something flirty with Dominic on TV or on social media or vice versa, there's a thousand replies. Of, oh, Buddy Matthews is going to be pissed. Oh, Buddy Matthews is going to hate this. So <laughs> Caster is doing his rap. He gets like one and a half lines in and says something about and Buddy and like a fucking comet. Buddy Matthews leaves the ring, charges, and hits Max Caster as hard as he possibly can. A giant brawl breaks out because Buddy's had enough. He's not putting up with no more of this shit. So we start with the heat. And uh, the goth guys are beating up the rappers and uh, a bunch of hot tag teases. I can't help but note, but since MJF has been playing pretend babyface in peril lately and being awesome at it, that all the baby faces in peril and all the other tag matches are doing a better job of it. He's making everyone else a better wrestler because they're trying to keep up with him. So Caster fights and cra crawls and scratches, and they take out Bowens. And so Daddy Ass gets the hot tag, and he's doing some punches and some shoulder blocks and some of the big man spots. But then he gets laid out by Brody King, who is even bigger. And Malachi Black hits Black Mass and pins him. Match was much shorter than you'd expect. The very evil goth dudes genuflect to the beaten daddy ass. They, they share words of uh, respect. They, 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 they dignify him. They make their exit. And then he begins to remove his boots. Undoes the Velcro flap. Undoes the dozens and dozens of laces. And uh, the fans are chanting, you've still got it. The acclaimed are just watching from the floor. And uh, then Daddy Ass leaves his boots in the ring. As he goes to exit, the acclaimed are waiting for him, but he blows them off and storms to the back. Mm. You know, uh, I presume that this is an angle. Sure. And, uh, you know, Malachi whispered something to him. It is possible, I would say it is not out of the realm of possibility, that uh, Billy Gunn randomly decided to retire on collision this past Saturday night. Stranger things have happened. And, uh, yeah. and you know, Malachi was thankful that he got to end his career and gave him a big thank you afterwards in the middle of the ring. That is, I cannot rule that out. But the, uh, you know, the finish, the whisper, the boots, the uh, shoving past Caster and Bones as he left, seems to me that this is an angle of some sort. And uh, where it goes, I do not know. But what I do know is, man, these acclaimed are over, dude. I don't know if I'd break up this act right now, but made my company. They're super over, and they lost convincingly to the House of Black. House of Black treated uh, their goodbyes to Billy Gunn like they were saying goodbye to their grandfather at Christmas time, patting him on the head and the shoulder and hugging and stuff. Now, now I'm picturing the House of Black exactly as they always dress, but with Santa hats on. Right. Yeah. As, uh, I'm hoping that Buddy that uh, Billy Gunn doesn't come back with a uh, black face paint. Oh, God, no. God, yeah. no. 
First says, wait, what happened to House of Rules? I don't know. Mm. Looks like it got dropped, and I'm fine with that because yeah. I didn't yeah. like it. Yeah. It added nothing to the match and was only a distraction. Well, that was a gimmick where they turned off one light. They turned off some lights. Put the snow and on the screen. There's a random yeah. rule that, you know, we don't oh, know. Oh, yeah, stupid thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, about that. You know what it was? It, you know what it reminded me of? And I don't mean to sound this negative, but it reminded me of NWA TNA, where it's like, let's find something to make this not as good. Like, what's wrong with the House of Black doing matches? You got Malachi, Buddy Matthews, and Brody King. What's wrong with them doing matches? Why do we have to add weird lighting and then, you know, the baby faces get one weird rule or something like that? What do we need that for? It does not enhance the act. It detracts from the act. Mm -hmm. So hopefully it's gone. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.